What's up guys? Welcome to week number 39 of my 2018 training. As promised, I decided to go ahead and get this one knocked up, so I'm now all caught up for the week on my training logs, and hopefully I can uh, get the other one pushed out before I leave for lovely Spokompton, Washington for Raw Nationals uh, next weekend. So that is coming up. Um, this week here, this being the third week in the rotation, um, I'm taking a, or I believe fourth week, sorry, fourth week in the rotation, going to be taking a concentric good morning on the camber bar here, or camber, however you say it. Um, what we basically did is went from the bar and went quarter plate, quarter plate up to a max. I ended up uh, working sets of five all the way up to 550 for five. So it ended up being a pretty good amount of volume on the good morning. Um, these felt pretty decent once I got the height kind of figured out. My right hip was a little gummed up from the sumo work the week prior, so I was a little bit shifty and the height that we originally had everything set up with didn't feel very good, so we moved it up literally one chain link and all of a sudden my glutes were able to fire without any issues. So uh, this is the, I want to say second to last set, this is 500 or so. Um, for five, that moved pretty well. Uh, if you remember back maybe two months ago, I hit this um, as an accessory on one of the dynamic days uh, pretty cleanly. So I was pretty confident in taking this top set with 550 here. Um, it moved pretty well. I lost my balance coming up on maybe the third or fourth rep. Uh, and it rattled the plates off, so you can see Gus run over to kind of resituate everything. But I think had I felt 100% on this day, I might have been able to go up closer to maybe 575 or maybe even 600. Um, for, but for feeling off, being able to best these by about 50 pounds is pretty good. So I took that, um, followed it with some goblet squats again, uh, did the first set or two with the 75 pound kettlebell, and then was able to get up to. Um, the 100 pound dumbbell for the last three sets. Uh, these felt pretty good. I am limited on these mostly by just being able to keep everything stable and centered and control my pelvis, my pelvis position. That's the main reason I'm using these, not necessarily to overload yet, uh, but I want that stability in a front loaded squat pattern. So I'll keep nudging these up here, um, but I'm gonna do it slowly. My goal is, like I said, more uh, corrective in nature than using it as a strength building exercise right now. So followed those with um, something I stole from Matt Winning. This is a what was supposed to be about a 30 second hold with 315. I did sets at one plate, two plate, and three plates. Um, these suck ass. They are way harder than I thought they would be. But they ended up complementing uh, the rest of the workout pretty well since I didn't do a heavy squat doing this to get some work in the bottom position, especially after having done the goblet squats as the uh, more dominant movement of the day. Those all felt pretty good. So um, pretty decent max effort upper day, all considering. Uh, this is the first week of starting uh, the Savage Press on the dynamic effort day. This I really, really love, and this was kind of a very educational workout for me. Um, I only included, I think, five or so of the different sets, but you can see that as these continue on, my touch point, bar path, speed, and tightness all improved pretty significantly. Um, and I was able to kind of figure out a little bit different way of cueing my shoulder blade position uh, with using this variation. So rather than thinking about trying to necessarily retract my shoulder blades and shrug them back, I'm trying to now get them as low and as close to my butt as I can. And for some reason, just thinking of it that way tends to, it, it pretty much completely changes how the, the shoulder blade digs into the bench pad. And it makes the lower touch point and the straighter bar path uh, feel a lot more natural and like it's the right way to go. So uh, I took a set here after all of the main speed sets and just slid the bench out so that way I could practice um, the same technique with my butt being down on the bench pad and you can see that move pretty well so uh, one of the things that I'm also noticing is as I'm in that position uh, the cueing of trying to maybe row the bar to your chest which I've heard a million times over actually starts to make sense and as you watch me doing the reps you can actually see my rib cage and, and entire torso start to move up towards the bar as it's descending towards my chest as opposed to collapsing in. So definitely some good technical improvements with that. Um, you notice I didn't include uh, any of the max effort footage on this. The day kind of went to shit. I was trying to do a floor press. It didn't go very well. And so we ended up just doing some touch and go, like moderate close grip 
Um, did a 10 by 10 on that and superset it with some of the back work, but that all felt pretty good. I think one of the things that I'm going to change for the heavier bench workouts, at least for the next couple weeks, is I'm going to stay either with a Savage Press or with just a regular uh, bench, but cue it that way. But I'm going to get a little bit less exotic with the variations on the Saturday workout. I'm going to pretty much stick with um, either Savage Press or just a regular comp bench. And I'm going to probably just either wave the, the loading or maybe change the grip width a little bit rather than trying to switch a variation um, quite as drastically every week because I think right now with how everything is improving and it's definitely getting better um, the Savage Press has been consistently the only variation that feels close to a hundred percent and I can replicate it in a normal competition style bench press now and it seems to be when I go to something that either changes the range of motion or changes the uh, angle of my upper back or anything like that that's when I start to kind of re-aggravate the same issue and then things tighten up and then the whole workout kind of goes to shit. So um, expect to see a little bit of change on the, the max effort upper days. I think that's a little bit better direction for me to go um, as far as where everything is at right now as opposed to maybe just trying to do lots of high rep work because I'm still trying to keep my pressing volume uh, low relative to my, my rowing and my, my tricep work. So. That's kind of where I think the next evolution of the bench work will be going. Um, keep some stabilizer work in. I can see the, the chaos push-ups here. So um, that's kind of what I'm thinking as far as that. Uh, this being the dynamic day, I'm showing you some of the different accessory work that I'm using now. Um, I'm adding back in some curling because I noticed that if I change the angle like this, um, I actually is a really good way of teaching me to control my shoulder blade position, which is why I shot this set from the back here. And you can see right there uh, the difference in position on everything as I go through different degrees of scapular retraction while doing the curl. As I'm lowering the kettlebell, because you can see I'm holding them kind of straight out, it puts a little bit more pressure on uh, those scapular muscles and I can really feel them struggle to hold the shoulder blades into place. So I'm using the bicep curl more as a corrective exercise for scapular position and control rather than to actually train the biceps. So those have been feeling pretty good. I've been using either uh, the kettlebells or with a dumbbell and alternating between a either just an alternating curl or a hammer curl in that kind of a position. So um, that brings us to the dynamic lower day. Um, what I'm doing here is I am back in briefs for my box squatting. So I worked 10 doubles with 250. I think I thought it was 240, but 250 uh, plus average bands, which I believe adds somewhere around 140, 150 pounds of tension at the top. Um, those all felt really good. My goal with that is to start getting some heavier weight on my back every week and uh, continue to work on opening up my hips so that the sumo pulls, which you're saying now, can continue to progress. Um, being in the wider stance has made these significantly better and you can see that these are way improved over where my sumo technique was at last week and I did not have any pain from that variation. So uh, the sumo pulls dropped back down to two plates but we switched over to the average band from the light band. So on that somewhere in the 120 pound of tension range I'm going to wave those for three weeks, 10 singles and then take a few straight weight singles after the speed work provided everything is feeling good. So. Um, that's the main change on the dynamic day for this next wave. The good mornings, we're going to be using a seated variation. Um, this is supposed to emphasize the upper back, and it does, but I actually feel it more in the lower abdominal area. So I try to actually cue myself back upright by flexing my uh, lower abs really hard while extending the upper back. That feels really good. I paired that with these pause demo deads, which felt fine, but I'll probably drop them because I don't think that I need them given the other exercises I have in rotation right now. So that's about it. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, like it, subscribe to the channel, check out the gym's website, savagegym.com, check out deadlistsfordornbecker.com, and I will talk to you next week. Take care.